Hi everyone. There is not many of you. Uh, so I'm going to talk about generic graphics tables in Linux. And uh, my name is Nikolai Kondrashov and I'm a software engineer. I do electronics as a hobby and uh, also embedded. Uh, I am the maintainer of Digi Digimant and the founder. And uh, by generic tablets, I mean <coughs> any graphics table is not made by Wacom. Those are usually designed and built in uh, Asia by a few OEM OEMs, but they, are, they might be branded and sold by many, many more companies. Uh, there's a short list of those, but there are still more. So uh, those can be very basic and very small and have very basic functionality like this one, uh, which is a quite old model, but they still make the tablets like these and they mostly sell those to people who want to make signatures or play certain games which require tablets. Then there are tablets which are, which, which you could use actually for drawing, but very, very simple and very cheap. Uh, and then some, some weird tablets. This tablet was actually produced a long time ago already, but it already had a battery-free pen and uh, tilt detection and touch controls. It didn't sell very well, maybe because it was expensive. Uh, and then now, nowadays there are wireless tablets which have like huge size, which you can put anywhere you want, and uh, even bigger tablet monitors, which you can use like a, it's, it's a, basically it's a competitor to Wacom Cintiq. And they can be quite usable. Uh, and there is like, there's an example of a recent one, recent tablet, it's just this thing. It's quite light and looks neat and um, has very high resolution, has battery free pen. And it supports also with the, as the manufacturer says, if you do a firmware update, it also supports steel detection. And it's not really expensive. I don't know how much it costs because I got it for free, but we can look it up. So, why do I do that if vacuum tablets are usually better? Well, they are still expensive. They're more expensive, like the vacuum Cintiq can be um, twice or thrice or four times more expensive as, the, uh, as the, that tablet monitor that we saw there. Uh, and uh, people in developing countries cannot afford those usually. Beginning artists don't have much money as artists in general. Uh, students obviously in schools also don't have much money and uh, it's good to have them use the tablets. And those are also the same people who would rather run Linux because they, uh, they don't, can't, can't really afford much in the way of a commercial software and uh, Windows licenses. And of course it's, uh, it's fun to work on the, on the code for me. So uh, I founded the Digiment project in 2008, basically started on, Sar on SourceForge. I am working specifically on non-vacuum graphics tablets and Linux. And uh, most of the time it's just me, but sometimes there are people coming and staying for a while or doing like one-time contributions of code, documentation, or supporting users just hanging around somewhere in the uh, issues on GitHub or on the mail list, when, I, when we had a mail list, or an IRC. So uh, it all started when I got a present from my wife uh, and her friend uh, graphics table because I was interested in drawing and computers, obviously. Uh, I got this, uh, this tablet for my birthday. Uh, and uh, the shop assistant said that the tablet works in Linux. And it did not. So I searched the internet and found something, uh, some fork with the Aptek tablet driver and the Aptek was like real tablets and this was like a toy tablet, a cheap one. And somebody made it work and that was a student from Czech Republic. So I joined him, I made it work with my tablet uh, and uh, then after a while uh, I made it support some more tablets and 
we supported this driver for a while and had a forum and supported users. Uh, it was a, not a kernel driver, but a XORG driver. So then, uh, basically, the problem with those tables was that the kernel didn't really understand them, and the, and the kernel was sending garbage to the user space, and the wizard pen driver tried to deal with that, basically trying to make sense, trying to untangle everything that the table had sent in the first place from that. So I thought that it would be better to fix the kernel instead, so that uh, we would be sending the right data in the first place. And then that's when I started my project on SourceForge. So uh, I looked around at how, uh, how tablets work. I read the USB heat specification, and uh, there is a little piece which describes how the tablets work in the, that, that the device is advertised, which is called report descriptor, and we'll go over that later. Uh, and uh, I thought that I could fix how the tablets advertise themselves so that the kernel understands them better. And I made a tool for making those report descriptors. I made a tool for dumping the data that the tablets send and the tool that dumps the data that the kernel sends. And uh, I started hiking on the kernel. Then I didn't have money to buy all these tablets, so I went around the computer shops and I uh, asked shop assistants if I can try them with my laptop. So I made some uh, dumps from the traffic and from what the tablets do, then went home and made the drivers and then back and tested them, and I got a number of them supported that way. Uh, then uh, since I advertised the drivers and uh, had some support, people started coming and um, asking for support for their tablets. And I uh, talked to the people and asked them for the dumps and uh, sent the drivers, and we got some supported. And I also wrote to Valtup, which was making a lot of tablets which were selling at that time. They don't seem to be so prominent anymore, but they sent me three tablets and I made drivers for them as well, which was fun. Uh, then uh, the SourceForge service, uh, unfortunately, uh, was deteriorating and I had to move somewhere else. I moved to, to GitHub. We got support for, the kernel got support for the um, out of three hit drivers. Uh, so I made this out of three driver package and uh, we made more tablets supported, some contributed. But then it was, it was already uh, quite a number of years I was doing this, so it, the, fun, the fun started evaporating from the process because it was like same old. And I had my family and um, stuff to do otherwise, other hobbies, so I decided I could Stop doing this, all the code is in the open, and if anybody wants to come over and uh, do the job, I would be ready to help. There were a few people who came and um, said that they want to do things, and I suggested the things that they try, but apparently it was maybe too hard or things like that. They didn't stick around. So that continued for a while, but then uh, a Japanese company came to me and said, like, oh, we are selling those computers and uh, with Linux and we're giving the tablets with them, but we don't have drivers. And we were really sad to see you stop doing that and we can try to support you. Then another came and asked for drivers for the specific, for very specific tablet. So I thought maybe with the money it would be, um, would make more sense to me and can give me some, you know, um, stimulus to do more, and uh, it seems to have worked. I also started the Patreon and uh, I got some support there. In this year, Huion received, uh, made some new tablets. We supported their tablets previously, uh, but they switched to new chips and uh, new protocol, new initialization, so there were nice tablets like this one. Uh, people started buying them, but they wouldn't work, so they started coming and asking, when is this going to work? I uh, finally wrote to Huion, and uh, we talked a little, and they agreed to pay for my work, and um, they sent tablets, and we got them working, which was great. It was fun. So, uh, does anybody here own a tablet? A graphics tablet? Okay, great. Uh, is it a vacuum one, or...? Yes. No, you have non vacuum one. That's good. Does it work? Um, sort of, and I haven't tried it for a while. 
Okay, okay, we can talk afterwards. Okay, so um, does anybody know how the HID protocol works? No? Okay, great. Then I get to show you more slides. So, uh, we are going to talk about uh, USB tablets right now. Uh, that's, I think that's the most of them this way. Even the wireless ones, they usually have USB dongle, which, which translates that to USB, and it looks exactly the same. So, the basic idea is that the PC can request a report descriptor from the tablet, which describes which data can go back and forth between the computer and the tablet, and what it means, like what is the coordinates, what is the uh, buttons, and, and everything. Uh, and uh, the major idea behind the heat specification was that you would not need many drivers, you would ever need the, only one driver, more or less, which would understand all the devices, which didn't happen, of course. So, uh, here's an example of uh, what the report descriptor can describe. So, for that table, this is uh, for the table that I first got, uh, the report descriptor would say that there could be uh, two different pieces of data coming from the tablet, one for the pen and one for the mouse, because it came with the mouse, which you can use on the surface as well. Uh, and, the, and they would be identified by the first byte, as this the standard way for all HID devices. They can have a first byte which says what kind of data it is, what it belongs to. Uh, and the report descriptor would also say that there are a few bits which mean which buttons are pressed, then a few bytes which mean the coordinates, on the surface of the tablet, and a few bytes, which mean the pressure, how much, how hard you press on the pen. Or you can have the mouse reports, which would also have uh, button bits, the relative coordinates in this case, and the mouse wheel. And that tablet had a, not a wheel, but a rocker. They, they wanted to make it cheap, so it didn't, didn't rotate, but it was kind of a wheel. But yeah, there were others with the wheels as well. So. This is how uh, a part of this report descriptor would look, and this is the one I fixed already to make it work. Uh, on the left, this is, this is a piece of C code which you can find in the kernel, and on the left it's the binary presentation, and on the right is the, uh, uh, the presentation which is used in the hit specification to write those report descriptors, like human readable. So, On the software side, we have the um, input stack and uh, HEAT protocol, human interface device protocol can work over USB, I2C, Bluetooth, and probably something else as well. But I'm not touching those at this moment, just the USB. So the HEAT uh, subsystem talks to the to USB subsystem in this case, and it has the uh, generic HEAT support which is uh, what handles all the devices that the kernel doesn't know. And for specific devices, uh, you can have drivers which subclass the, um, the generic heat driver, kind of uh, make an instance slightly modify the behavior and uh, fix some things. And that includes the drivers that I worked on and the vacuum driver as well, although vacuum does most of the stuff that, that needs to be done. Then <clears throat> all of that talks to the input layer, which then talks via EVDEF protocol to the user space. And EVDEF protocol is, uh, is basically just a few bytes passing through with each input report, uh, saying which, this, uh, which event type it is, like is it an absolute event, or is it a keyboard event, or is it a some, something else. And, uh, for absolute event, it can be a coordinates or uh, rotation or something like that. For keyboard event, it obviously can be keys on the keyboard or buttons on the mouse. And then there's the value which happened, the coordinates or the state of the button. So that's the EVDEF protocol, but it has many event types and many more event codes. And uh, on the graphical part of this, uh, you have the XORG which has drivers which talk to EVDEV directly. 
or it can, has, uh, has the uh, libinput driver nowadays, which talks to the libinput library, which is also used by Wayland, but I'm not working with Wayland yet. And then the, you have the toolkits, which also interpret that data and make it more palatable for the applications. All of this can break in any piece. So we get, when working on this, we get to work on all the parts. So why don't they work? First of all, the heat specification uh, was, a, I think it was a great endeavor, but it was perhaps too great and trying to encompass too much and it turned out to be a bit, well, the, the core of it is, is good, but the, um, it is a bit too vague, vague and um, it doesn't do very well at describing all the possible cases. Then the Windows generic heat driver isn't very good in part, I think, because you don't get to cooperate with Microsoft very, very much unless you are very big. Uh, and then, obviously, the smaller OEMs, the Asian companies, they don't, don't, don't get a say in that. They don't get a say in the heat specification or in the Windows heat driver. So they just muddle through somehow, just make it work. And uh, also, Linux is behaving a little differently from Windows, which makes it a little diffi more difficult to support those devices without a driver. And finally, the developers often don't test with uh, non-Vacuum graphics tablets, because well, Vacuum is good, so... But that is changing. So, his specification, it has 97 pages defining just the language for describing like this, the protocol itself and the language for the report descriptors and how it will work in general. But then it has 767 pages describing specific, how specific devices should be implemented with that report descriptor, how they should work and, and everything, everything, everything. So it is not exactly very, uh, you know, generic protocol. And only eight of these pages define how digitizers work, and out of these eight pages, about three pages are examples of report descriptors. So there's not much to define how they should work. Uh, and it looks like the companies who participate the, in the human interface device working group, they uh, work in their little silo on their devices. They create new ideas, like Vacuum works on their tablets, uh, somebody works on, the, you know, uh, flight simulators or something, and they figure something out, and they write document and write the document, and they submit it to the organization, and then it gets stored there. So there's no little dialogue about what other companies would want, and uh, you have to be a member if you want to participate. And those specifications, like since they are descriptive, they are not tested. Like, can I make an implementation of this device? Can I make a driver out of this specification? They are not very good help in writing the drivers. So, uh, furthermore, even the official report descriptor authoring tool is uh, buggy and uh, it misinterprets the specifications sometimes. Uh, for example, it stores the, uh, there, is, there is a way to specify units, for example, for the, uh, for the tablet coordinates. You can say like, okay, this is in uh, thousands of an inch, that's the usual uh, unit for this. And you get to write in the report descriptor that this is units, and then you can say like 10 to the, that inch is 10 to the minus three. And that minus three gets stored incorrectly because there is a bug in the tool, they misread the specification, which wasn't very good at that point. And uh, it's stored wrong. And uh, most of the report descriptors that were produced with this tool, they, well, most of the report descriptor in the, the descriptors in the wild, they store that incorrectly, not according to specification. And now it's the law. So when I implemented reading the um, unit exponent in the kernel, I used the specification and then turned out it's, it was wrong. So we had to make it work with both uh, the wrong and the right way. And that limits the ranges that you can use for these units. So very small, or very big units won't work. Uh, well, there's, there's things like that. And uh, obviously the USB implementer forum, the uh, mostly interested in the companies that are members. And uh, that only directs, only addresses users themselves in the, very indirectly. So it's mostly about profits and uh, if I get to slap the certified logo or not on my product. So the little problem with the generic 
heat driver and windows regarding tablets is that it doesn't seem to support the um, S32 data type of the report descriptor, so you can only uh, use S16 to describe how many uh, different coordinates you have on the tablet, which is obviously not enough for, well, not obviously, you might not know that, but the modern tablets, they have very high resolution and that doesn't fit. And which makes the, uh, by default, the tablets uh, clip the resolution very much, so it drops significantly. And if you want the full resolution, you have to write a custom driver for your tablet because the generic Windows heat driver won't, won't support this resolution. It's, it's my conclusion, I don't know for certain, but it looks that way because everybody does that. So, about that. Okay. <clears throat> so what the OEMs do, well, they, 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 they tr just try to make them work. So there are things that like, uh, they reuse the usages uh, in the same report descriptor for the same interface. Like, like they can say like, there is gonna be one report uh, that says, uh, I will report absolute coordinates. And then there's gonna be another report that says, I report absolute coordinates. And maybe a third one. And they do that maybe because they had some idea to implement something and didn't, or because they have some different modes for operation and they need that. But this is the thing that they do. Uh, it's not exactly against the specification, but at least it's, uh, the specification doesn't say what to do with that. Next, uh, the buttons on the pen are reported with whatever usages come look look like they could be used because the specification doesn't say what to do with pens which have two buttons on the side like this one here. Uh, the frame controls on the side that the, uh, you can see here, the buttons, are often reported by default as uh, Windows application shortcuts. I press this like and it says uh, Control F or something. And I press this, it says Control Z instead of being something abstract that you can bind to. So it, it will report a code like control pressed and then uh, Z pressed, Z released, control released or something like that. Uh, or because of the, because of the uh, incorrect unit exponent and uh, because uh, people just misunderstand the specification that you can come up with something like that saying that these coordinates are going to be in cubic tera inches. So this is a little more than, bigger than this one and also multidimensional. Uh, and uh, another thing that they do is that they, they just like give up on report descriptors and say like, oh, okay, I, let's just, let's say it's all vendor specific. Uh, so because of that, uh, the, the default mode that they operate, which, which would give us a chance to make them work without drivers, becomes very useful, well, not, not useful. In the past, you could lock out to make, like, to, for the tablet to work right from, from the start, but nowadays, no luck. Which is sad because um, these devices are quite simple to, to you know, to understand. So if the specification was more clear about them, it could have been done. So they, they need the initialization to turn on all the features, which you can do like by sending a feature report, which is more or less to the, to the specification, but then you get UC logic, which tells you like request a string descriptor, which are originally used like for saying like, like the uh, vendor name or product name or something like that, but they say, we'll send you a string descriptor and that will turn on the special features and we'll also send you not a string but a binary data which encodes all the parameters of your tablet. So screw the specification. Uh, yeah, you get those uh, and it will also turn on the, um, the buttons that will give you like genetic codes, not the key combinations. And, uh, and sometimes it results this extended mode in something which cannot be described by a report descriptor because of the language limitations. So uh, those du duplicate usages that tablets use and I assume other devices as well, there are no problem in Windows. Windows just like says, okay, whatever, duplicate usages. 
I'll just uh, link them to the same events. But Linux does this thing because they have only one event, event device per interface by default, uh, per report descriptor. They say like, okay, I got the coordinates. Okay, there's this uh, ABSX, ABS Y, ABS Z. But then again, I get the coordinates. What do I do with that? So they uh, say, okay, let's add to the event code and let's, let's this be ABS rotation around axis X, ABS rotation around axis Y. And whatever comes, like just, just, just push them somewhere so that user space can differentiate this somehow, never mind that this doesn't make sense to the driver. So kind of thanks to that, the visit pen driver was able to extract that data, but thanks to that, other drivers weren't able, the generic driver weren't able to understand that. And there is a little bit which you can set in the driver or in the information structure for your tablet, for your device in Linux, which is called hit quirk multi input, which makes the kernel create separate event devices for each report ID. And that would fix many tablets in the past, but nowadays when you need the initialize it and all these things, uh, it kind of doesn't make, doesn't do much. Uh, but you, you sometimes need to set that bit still. So and then the uh, the idea that the graphics table is, is, is vacuum also hurts because people don't test non-vacuum non tablets and uh, the stuff breaks because they don't test it. And uh, for example, when I had to make this uh, tablet which supported till detection to work, I had to figure out how vacuum works exactly. Is it like, uh, is it reporting an angle or is it reporting something else? And it was quite difficult to figure out because it was uh, well, very vacuum specific. Uh, then there is this uh, GNOME vacuum tablet configuration tool and it already has the word vacuum and means that it is tilted towards vacuum a lot. But in the recent times, they, they paid some attention to the um, other tables, which is great. They support a few uh, Huion tables, which were very popular. But the problem is that they, uh, as, as far as I know, until recent time, they required an entry in the database for each of the tables. You can create it yourself as a user and put it in a separate directory and it will probably work. But then, there is another problem that, for example, Huion, they reuse vendor IDs and product IDs. So they have like, I don't know, nowadays they have maybe uh, 10 models or more which use the same IDs. And uh, you cannot identify them in any way except by looking at the parameters, which the kernel reports like resolution and the axis extends and the pressure extends. Uh, and that's not exactly trivial. So I like the time to go and make that tool work. I think that the, the developers of the Vacuum stack are very open to contributions and uh, I would like to do that eventually, but I don't have enough time. So if you are a developer here or in there watching the stream, get one of the tablets or two, they are very cheap and test, it will help a lot. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, as I said before, I made the uh, out of three drivers, and that was a great, great thing to do finally because before I had to patch the kernel and provide the patches so that users can download them and patch their own kernel or I had to build my own kernels for like for Ubuntu. Take the stock kernel, apply the patches, rebuild the stock kernel, make it available for download on Sour's Forge and that would be only Ubuntu. So once the, uh, the out of three driver support was beaten into shape, it allowed me to make the drivers out of three, to keep them out of three, to make it easier to just like run make in the directory and install the drivers and it was faster to develop and faster and easier for users to install. But it's of course a bit of a hassle to, to contribute this back to upstream. So uh, my idea of keeping up with upstream is that we only keep modules with the new drivers, with the drivers that that we need to add or to develop something. 
uh, obviously, and uh, we keep as close to upstream as possible. We don't you don't invent something special, and uh, keep it close to the to the drivers that are in upstream to the modules. We have to copy some private definitions that are not available through the headers. Uh, there, 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 there's not much of them, so it's okay. But eventually we might need to talk about that with the kernel guys. And uh, we have to have some compatibility macros to support the newer versions of the kernel. But mostly it works great. Only, again, I didn't have much time to contribute a lot of recent changes. So that's what I'm going to work next, to do next. Uh, there are a few problems with the working out of tree still. Uh, and the main thing is that uh, the generic, the hit stack uh, only knows about the drivers that it has in the kernel. And if the driver is not registered in the kernel, if the particular vendor and product IDs are not in the kernel table for them, then it just loads the generic driver. And if you are out of tree, you cannot affect that table. So what we do is we have a little UDF script which um, rebinds the drivers if it finds one for this particular tablet. And uh, through, through the, through the uh, CSFS. So that, that, that way we can kind of yank back the control of the tablet from the generic hit driver. So they, when you plug in your tablet, the generic hit driver comes in and tries to handle it, then we come and detach that and attach our driver instead. But it works fine. So uh, if you want to make a tablet like that work, uh, first of all, you need to find out what it is, what parameters it has, like what what resolution, etc. Then you need to find out if there is any initialization you need to do. You need to, I would recommend going with the, with writing a report descriptor if you can go through the, um, through the specification somehow. Uh, then uh, most likely you will need to tweak some, something in the reports, tidy up the, uh, remove the extra event devices and contribute. So, uh, first of all, the first thing you do is look at what the tablet actually sends when you uh, draw with the pen and press the buttons and you use the, uh, to dump the USB traffic and see which bits correspond to what. Find the, uh, where the coordinates are reported, pressure is reported, and tilt range and things like that, the buttons on the pen. Uh, read the, uh, manufacturer specification and verify that you get the full resolution that they specify. And find out if not, then you need to find out the initialization. And uh, yeah, check the drawing area size, the actual, the physical size, so that you can specify the actual resolution. So here is an example of the um, default mode that's uh, about the same protocol that we saw previously. So there is the, uh, Report ID, then the block with the buttons, but there is no proximity bit, so when the pen approaches the tablet, uh, you will not get any indication. And actually, that's not a big deal, but when you lift, lift the pen from the tablet, the software does not differentiate between you stopping moving it and that the pen actually is out. It's not a big deal, a software can work with that, but uh, for for Vacuum, Vacuum it is, very, is important because Vacuum can use multiple pens, multiple tools, and the stack uh, expects that, and some applications might break if it doesn't report the proximity bit. So this stuff about proximity bit breaks from time to time, and recently there was an issue with the uh, lib input drivers. Uh, and there were issues previously as well. So in default mode, UC logic does not report proximity. There is, uh, you can see the X coordinate, Y coordinate, and pressure, and that's fine. But in this mode, all the tablets with the higher resolution, they will have the resolution clipped. So, 
So if the tablet already reports everything you need or you don't mind the reduced resolutions, many people don't because it's still quite high, uh, then you're set. Just uh, right, continue on without initialization. Uh, but uh, yeah, check the resolution and the frame controls make sense. And uh, to try out the, if you can initialize it, you can try UCLogic Probe because most of the tablets uh, right now are based on UCLogic chips and that will give you the uh, extended mode and the parameters of the tablet from the tablet itself. If it doesn't help or if your tablet is old or some curious tablet, try the Valtep and Kai methods which are linked from these slides. Uh, or, and if it's something else, then you have to catch the Windows driver traffic and uh, see what happens. Uh, so here is the uh, uh, how how the reports look for the for the uh, old Huion tablets. So the report ID changes. You can see that the uh, coordinates and uh, pressure stay in the same bytes, but the range changes. But then <coughs> there appears the proximity bit, which is inverted against the specification. But that's easy to do. You can uh, flip it in the driver. But then there comes the, uh, the new protocol for the new tablets, and there is this still another report ID. The coordinates mostly stay the same, but for tablets with larger resolution, still larger resolution, they add one more byte per each coordinate in another place. Uh, and uh, that's what makes this incompatible with report descriptors. So in the driver, you can, what I had to do is to shuffle the bytes around so that it could be interpreted by report descriptors. Uh, yeah, you, and then the, the proximity bit disappears again. Uh, sorry about this mismatch, it's an issue with slides. Uh, so buttons are there, but the proximity bit is not there. And I talked to Huion, they promised that they will fix it, but I don't know when, hopefully soon. And then if you lift your pen too fast from the surface like this, the table does not report that the, that the buttons were released and like he, it stays, they are st staying pressed and that screws up the applications quite in a major way. So there should be a report here setting uh, the bits to zero and it's not there. So we had to work this around the proximity and the release in the driver. Uh, so if, uh, if UCLogic probe worked, and this, which is quite likely, you just extend the um, UCLogic driver and you won't need to write any report descriptor, but uh, otherwise you might need to, to write some report descriptor and you can find plenty of examples in the, in the kernel and also we have a tablet information repository where we store fixed report descriptors for some of the tablets. Uh, you can use the header deconvert to decode the report descriptor, fix it up, and then convert it back to binary, which can be used in the kernel. Uh, and uh, in the report fix up handler, you can feed it to the kernel. And there's uh, plenty of examples in the kernel to make it happen. So the uh, workflow would be get the report descriptor from the tablet, convert it to XML. I'm sorry about XML, but it was easier to do. At that time, uh, <clears throat> you can edit in the XML and then you convert it back to code and just paste it into your C file. So like for things like the proximity bit or for moving bytes around and uh, doing other things, you can use the raw event handler and uh, shuffle them around. And uh, for the, for example, for the tilt reports for that Valtop tablet, I had to uh, translate the from the sign of the angle to the angle or the other way around. So you can do all that there, which is very convenient. So finally, uh, you need to remove the, if you don't change the original report descriptor or uh, or you want to have fancy names, you can do that by returning the InnoDev from probe, and that just scratches out the interface that you don't need, and in input configured, you can change the event name, event device name. So instead of a bunch of 
those event devices which are named the same, and you would see those like in GIMP, for example. You open up your editor and there you see like a bunch of devices which are named the same. Some of them are not working at all, some of them are reporting the buttons. Like one of them is reporting the buttons, another of them is reporting the pen. And uh, some devices use that name to identify and remember which one is supposed to report the pen, uh, or at least it was that way. So you really need to get rid of the extra devices in this case and uh, rename those, and that's how you do that. Uh, so you can go directly to the kernel. Uh, it works as well, and that's what I did for a while. But if you come to the to the, our driver, then you get users faster to help you verify that everything is working. And uh, yeah, it's easier to work on that, and uh, it's faster. So. <laughs> Uh, in other case, you will need to follow the kernel coding style, read about that, and uh, you will need... To, it, it is very good if you keep the commits logically separate, and you can read about that if you haven't heard about it. Uh, so, many tablets in the past, and still some of them right now, used to have these little uh, pictures on the drawing surface here, and those are just a gimmick. Don't bother about making them work. It's much easier to just put a panel with buttons on your screen so that you don't have to look down on your tablet. That's what they expected you to do. So if you wanted to do like a copy paste or something, you had to look at your tablet and then look at your screen. So it doesn't work that way. So don't bother about those. And that is all. Yeah, and uh, I have some stickers if you want to put them on something to uh, advertise the project, that would be great. And uh, if somebody wants to support me on Patreon, you get special stickers. Okay, thank you. Anybody, any questions? All set? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Which last upstream version of the Linux kernel are you supporting? Uh, which last version of the upstream kernel I support? Uh, I think it should work with the latest. I get complaints when uh, it stops working with recent versions, and I fix that. It should work if it doesn't. Just, just try it, it'll fix it. Usually it does. I don't have a test. I should have a test to, to, to test that automatically, but I don't. Anybody else? No? Okay. You have a working tablet here? Uh, yeah, sure. Or you can give some recommendations? Well, that would be an advertisement. I'm not sure I should do that, but in person I can, I can tell you. But I, I have to warn you that uh, I personally don't draw. So, yeah, I, I just make the drivers. Once you have a working tablet, what do you do with it? Well, I, uh, yeah. What does anyone do with it? Yeah, what do I do with the tablets which I uh, made to work? Well, I store them to test with them later. But I mean, what applications are there on Linux? Oh, there's plenty. There's great applications. So there is uh, GIMP, you know, obviously, of. For photo editing, there is uh, my paint for painting, like the uh, painting pictures. There's Krita for that as well, I think. There is uh, animation programs. There is Inkscape. Uh, there is a lot of programs right now which you can use with the tablet. And there is uh, people make work the uh, uh, this the games that use tablets as well work on Linux. Uh, there's plenty of, of stuff to do, actually, and. Uh, There are applications which, you, yeah, well, I shouldn't talk about that, that's about client, but there are different applications, not only for drawing and for artists that use the tablets. Like, they can use them for digital signatures, for, like, for compliance purposes. What program do you use for, for uh, doing the dumps uh, in Windows? 
Uh, what programs do I use for, for doing the dumps in Windows? Well, I usually don't. You can, I think you can use Wireshark if you run on na Windows natively, but I usually just run Windows in a VM and run Wireshark or uh, yeah, Wireshark on, on the host. And that works fine. Anybody else? Okay, well, if you have any more questions, just come over afterwards and get your sticker and uh, ask me more questions. Thank you. Thank you.